Angles is a very basic element in geometry, so we'll have a look at the concept and some theorems related to angles and then parallel lines. Okay, first of all, the definition of a angle. When two rays share an origin, they form a angle. For example, in the diagram on the left, rays OX and OY share origin O, right? We can refer to the angle they form as angle XOY. We use a small symbol here to tell us we are referring to an angle. The common origin is called the vertex of that angle, and the rays OX and OY are called size of the angle. Notice that when we write angles as angle X or Y, we put the vertex in the middle. We could also refer to the angle as Y or X. The order of the two points X, Y does not matter, but not as X or y, X, y, O. And if it's not ambiguous, you could also say angle O, because at this point here, it has only one angle here, right? Well, suppose the angle is acute angle, then you could say angle O. Otherwise, it's better to use X O Y because sometimes if you just say angle O, it could also mean this angle here, right? So it only depends. If it's not ambiguous, you could say angle O. Otherwise, it's better to use three letters. Or you could also put a small letters here, alpha or beta or gamma or theta. Sometimes use Greek letters to denote angle. Okay, so of course two intersecting lines also make angles. So for example, on the right side, there's a diagram showing lines A, B, and C at right intersect at P. Here we can't just write angle P because there are four different angles, right? Since there are many different possible angles it could mean, such as angle APC, ABD, DPB, and PBC. So it's better to use three letters, not just one, if there is a ambiguity. Okay, so now we know what angles are. We need a way to measure them so we can compare one angle to another. So have you already learned how to measure a angle using a protractor in school? This is a protractor. Do you know how to use it? Now, if all of you has, has already know how to use it and how to use it to draw an angle, well, just pass this part, okay? Otherwise, you could find some references on the internet. It's very simple, straightforward method. So basically, you put the initial arm here and terminal arm here indicates the measurement of the angle, right? All right, so now let's do a quick exercise. Diagram below shows four common angles. In each case, point O is center of the circle. Angle OAB cuts off one quarter of the circle. Angle COD cuts off one third. Angle EOF cuts off one twelfth. And angle GOH cuts off one eighth of the circle. What are the measurements of these angles? And of course, we say one full revolution is 360 degrees. This is by definition, right? So if you have an angle here, then one full, turn, one full turn of one full round or one full revolution is 360 degrees by definition.
我在上课呢，我在上课呢。别说话了，上课呢啊。OK。All right, you should have finished. So, angle AOB is a uh, one quarter of 360 degrees, right? So it's uh, 90 degrees, and angle COD is 120 degrees. Angle EOF is 30 degrees. Angle GOH is 45 degrees, right? Any questions? Okay. Now let's consider another quick quiz. So here given angle WOI equals 60 degrees and angle WOX equals 20 degrees, can you find angle XOY? Again, this question is uh, pretty straightforward because this angle here is 60 degrees, right? And we know WOX here is 20 so angle XOY is just uh, 6 degrees minus 20 degrees, which is 40 degrees, right? Any questions? No, okay. Let's see another quick quiz. Suppose instead of measuring angles the regular way, we go the long way around as shown in the diagram here. The regular angle PQR has measure 40 degrees, what is the measure of the long way around the angle? Again, the question is pretty straightforward, right? Because we know one full revolution is one, so it's 360 degrees, right? So here we have, um, let's call this angle alpha, then angle alpha should be 360 degrees minus the 40 degrees here, right? Which gives us 320 degrees. Any questions? Okay, next one. We, let's have a look at different types of angles. Angles can be classified by their measures. A 90 degree. <laughs> Angles can be class. Oh, sorry about that. Angles can be classified by their measures. A 90 degree angle is right angle. Lines, segments, or rays that form a right angle are said to be perpendicular. An angle smaller than 90 degrees is called acute angle. An angle between 90 and 180 degrees is called obtuse angle. Angle that measures 180 is called a straight angle, and any angle of more than 180 degrees is called a reflex angle. Are you clear with the concept here? Any questions? Okay, then let's consider a quick quiz here. Can you categorize each of the following angles? Connect the angle with the correct category it belongs to. So when alpha equals 15 degrees, is it a right angle, acute angle, straight angle, obtuse angle, or reflex angle? Which category does it belong to? Yeah. Michelle? Um, acute angle. Acute angle, that's correct. How about alpha equals 90 degrees? That's called um, the right angle. Isn't it? It's called the right angle. 
called a right angle, right? A 90 degree angle is a right angle, right? Yeah, I'm just saying, isn't it like beta or alpha in that setting? Right. Yes, how about when theta yeah. equals 120 yeah. degrees? Neil, any comments? Neil, can you hear me? Okay, probably your microphone doesn't work, so I'll answer for you, okay? Your microphone doesn't work. I cannot hear you. So 120 degrees is uh, obtuse angle, right? Okay, Leo, how about one? This Greek letter is called gamma, right? Gamma equals 300 degrees. Which category does it belong to? Leo, can you hear me? Leo, are you still there? Yeah. When gamma equals 300 degrees, which category does it belong to? A reflex angle. Okay, see the description here. Any angle that is more than 180 is called a reflex angle, right? Can you follow me? Then here we should connect it with this term here, reflex angle. You understand? And when phi equals 180 degrees, this is a straight angle because any angle that is 180 degrees is a straight angle. Okay, any questions? No. Again, so far the questions are pretty straightforward, right? Okay, let's have a look at. Okay, Leo, uh, can you follow me? All right, then next, let's have a look at different relationships of angles. First, adjacent angles. So what adjacent angles mean? We call angles that share the same side are uh, adjacent angles. For example, as shown on the left side, angle WOX and XOY are called adjacent angles. Did you get it? Again, this is just a concept. Adjacent angles means angles share the same sign. And next, supplementary angles. We call two angles that add to 180 degrees supplementary angles. For example, if we have diagram like this, two line crosses the point X, then angle WXY Here, plus angle yxz here equals 180 degrees, right? Therefore, we say angle wxy and angle yxz are supplementary angles. Did you 
get it? Okay. Next one, complementary angles. We call angles that add to 90 degrees complementary angles. For example, if line AO is perpendicular to line OB, then this angle here is a straight angle. We usually we use this symbol to denote a straight angle, right? And here we know angle AOC plus angle BOC equals 90 degrees. Then we say angle AOC and angle BOC are complementary angles. Did you get it? So be careful with the difference of complementary angles and supplementary angles. 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Okay? And last, vertical angles. Vertical angles means pair of angles such that in this diagram, angle MPN and angle LPO. These two angles are called vertical angles or angle LOM and angle OPN. These two angles are also a pair of vertical angles. Okay, do you have any questions? All right, then let's do a quick quiz and then after that we can take a short break, okay? So here we have two lines, line LN and line MO. They intersect at point P here. Can you prove that angle MPN equals angle LPO? You prove this angle equals this angle, which means vertical angles are equal. We don't have to prove MPN is a vertical and up here is vertical angles, right? Because they just are. Yeah, they, they just are vertical angles. The problem is, how do you prove vertical angles are equal? Um, because, like, for example, LPM is uh, uh, angle alpha. And MPN plus alpha equals to 180 degrees, and then LPO plus uh, um, angle alpha is also 180 degrees. So it means that LPO equals to MPN. Yeah, that's correct. That's uh, that's how we can prove vertical angles are equal, right? So we could write it like this. So angle LPM plus angle MPN equals 180 degrees and then angle LPM plus angle LPO is also 180 degrees, right? So we can use equation number one minus equation number two. This will give us angle MPN minus angle LPO is zero, which means angle MPN equals angle LPO, right? Okay, next let's have a look at the definition of parallel lines. 
In geometry, if two lines are coplanar and do not intersect at any point, we say that they are parallel. If two lines A, B, and C, D are parallel, usually we write A, B, followed by two vertical dash here, and C, D. So we write A, B is parallel with C, D like this. For example, if you look at figure 2.2, there are two sets of parallel lines. Usually, we'll use different sets of arrows to indicate different sets of parallel lines. The first set is line K is parallel with line J, parallel with line L. The other set is line M is parallel with line N. Did you get it? Again, the concept itself is not so complex, right? And next, let's have a look at the angles between a transversal and two parallel lines. Suppose we have a setup like this. Line M is parallel with line N. And another line L, which is here, cuts across parallel lines M and N. And then L is called a transversal. Then we have a series of angles here. According to their positions, they, there are different names. For example, angle A and E are called corresponding angles. And angle D and angle F here and here are called alternate interior angles. Angle C, uh, angle A and G A is here, G is here, are called alternate exterior angles. And angle C and F are called same side interior angles. And angle B and G are called same side exterior angles. Again, different names assigned to different pairs of angles depending on their positions. Any questions? All right, so let's check your understanding. So suppose we have a pair of parallel lines, M and N, and L is a transversal. Which angles are called corresponding angles? Which pair of angles are called alternate interior angles? Which pairs of angles are called same side interior angles? So use lines to connect the angles with their corresponding names. Okay, I'll give you one minute to think about that and we'll have a look at the solution together. Okay, let's do this together. A and E are called corresponding angles, right? D and H. D is here, H is here. Same position, right? So they are also called corresponding angles. B and F are also corresponding angles. And C and G are also corresponding angles, right? Next, D and F. D is here, F is here. They are called alternate interior angles. C and E are also alternate interior angles. D and E are called same side interior angles and C and F are also same side interior angles. Any questions? No, okay. Then let's have a look at the main properties of parallel lines. We have a series of property theorems. We have four of them. So first, let's have a look at these property theorems. Then we're trying to prove each one of them, okay? So property theorem one states that 
if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. Congruent means equal. For example, as shown on the right, we have uh, M is parallel with line N. L is a transversal. Then we have the following relationship. A equals B, C equals D, E equals F, and G equals H. Corresponding angles are congruent in parallel lines. Okay, that's the first set of theorem. The second property theorem states that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. For example, on the right, if line M is parallel to N, L is a transversal, then we have A equals B and C equals D. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, theorem three. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary means sum of these two angles equals 180 degrees, right? So as shown here on the right, if M is parallel to N, L is a transversal, then we have same side angles A plus D equals 180, and C plus B also equals 180, right? Okay, theorem 4 states that if two lines M and N are parallel, then every point on line M is located at exactly the same distance from line N. For example, on the right, if A is the arbitrary point on line M, M is parallel to N, AB is perpendicular to N, then AB is a constant. The length of AB is constant. All right, so the problem is... Arbitrary. Pardon? What does arbitrary mean? Arbitrary means any. Okay. okay. So the problem is that how do we prove these theorems? Okay, recall the Euclid's five axioms, axioms we have just stated. These are our starting point to prove any of the theorems because we haven't learned any other theorems yet, right? So these are starting point of our proof. So based on these five axioms, can you first prove the theorem one? Okay, let's have a look at the Euclid's five axioms now. So probably you want to take a snapshot or write them down on a piece of paper and use these five axioms which are necessary to prove the first theorem. Once the first theorem is proved, the remaining theorems are very easy to prove, okay? So let's have a look at the first one. Given that M is parallel to N, L is transversal, can you prove two angles A equals V? How can you do this? You might think this is obvious, right? But you have to prove it. Okay, in geometry, a lot of things seems obvious, but it's not. And you need to provide a strict mathematical proof.
Okay, I'll give you a hint. Probably we can use a fifth axiom, right? Remember, we don't have to prove any of these five axioms because they are believed to be true. These or these are our starting point. The fifth axiom states that if two lines are drawn which intersect a third in such a way that the sum of the inner angles on one side is less than two right angles, then the two lines inevitably must intersect each other at that side if extended far enough. So any ideas? First one. I don't think I understand the intensity theorem. A fifth theorem states that. Okay, suppose you have a line. You have suppose you have two lines. Uh, this is the first line. This is the second line, right? Intersect with the third line. If the sum of these two angles here less than two right angles, two right angles is 180 degrees, right? If the sum of these two right, if this the, if the sum of these angles is less than 180 degrees, then these two lines must intersect at some point here. So we can use this to prove this theorem, right? We can do it like this. So we can assume. Well, let's assume A is not B. If A is not B, either we have A is less than B or A is greater than B, right? Which means A is greater than B or A is less than B, right? So it's okay. We it's okay to assume A is greater than B. Otherwise, if A is less than B, the method is the same. Then we know A plus C must equal 180 degrees, right? So C is here. Let's say C is angle here. A plus C equals 180 degrees. Therefore, we know B plus C must be less than 180 degrees, right? So what does this indicate? So according to Euclid Phipps proselyte uh, axiom, then it means that M and N is not must intersect. Yeah, M and N must intersect at some point, right? Yes. On the left side. So this is contradictory with the fact that M is parallel to N which is contradictory with the fact that m is actually m m is actually parallel to n therefore our assumption here does not hold it's not correct therefore a must equal b right so therefore the assumption. Well, let's call it one. Assumption in one is not correct. Therefore, we know if it's not correct, the opposite of it must correct must be correct. So therefore, we know a must equal b, right? In this way, we have proved a equals b. Did you get it? Okay, so if you have proved the first one, how do you prove the second theorem? Given M is parallel to N, L is a transversal, can you prove A equals B? Of course you can use Euclid's fifth axiom, but if we have already proved theorem 1, then we can use theorem 1 as a starting point, right? Because you have proved it. So, K 
can you use serum 1 to prove serum 2? Of course we can do it. Because... Yeah, you can continue. Um, because M is parallel to N, and uh, yeah, well, yeah, C and A are there. Yeah. yeah, therefore C equals C, C right? Is because this is according yeah. to serum one, which states that corresponding uh, angles are equal. Yeah, and C equals A. And we have C vertical angles, right? Vertical angles also equal, we have already proved that. Therefore, we know A equals B, right? So the second theorem has also been proved. And the third one. Given that M is parallel to N, L is transversal, can you prove A plus B is 180 degrees? Again, this time you could use either theorem 1 or theorem 2 to help you to prove theorem 3, right? So we can use it. We can say M is parallel to N, therefore B equals C. Again, corresponding angles are equal. C is here. Because A plus C equals 180 degrees, A plus C must also, equals, must also equal 180 degrees, right? So therefore, if two lines are parallel, same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, you can try to prove the fourth one by yourself after this class. This is a little complex. All right, so based on this theorem, these four theorems, let's do a quick quiz here. Suppose line M and N are parallel. And we are given the measures of one angle in the diagram as shown here. Find the values of A, B, C, W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, I'll give you one minute, and after that, I'll show you the solution, okay? Okay, have you finished? Neil? Have you finished? Michelle? Finished? Okay, Neil, how about Neil? Okay, and the concept here is very straightforward, right? So, because M is parallel to N, A is here, then first of all, we can find A is 180 minus 113, which is 67 degrees, right? And then B equals A equals 67 degrees because B and A are vertical angles. Then C equals 113 degrees. C and this angle are vertical angles as well. W, uh, w equals 113 degrees because there's corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are equal, right? X equals B equals 67 degrees. X and B are corresponding angles. 
and y equals c equals 113 degrees and last z equals a equals 67 degrees okay any questions all right then if no questions let's have a look at the next one okay suppose we have a figure like this we have line ab okay remember we use this notation to denote the line right line ab is parallel to line cd and line ad is parallel to line bc we are also given the measures of four angles as shown in terms of x and y can you find x and y Okay, let's have a look at the solution together. Well, usually if you have two unknown variables, we need at least two equations to solve the two unknown variables, right? So these equations come from this diagram. So first of all, because these two lines are parallel, therefore this angle here is y, right? Because these two angles are corresponding angles. Then this angle here is x because this angle is a vertical angle with x. And this angle here equals this angle. So here we have 3y plus 15 degrees, right? So we have a first equation, 3y plus 15 degrees plus x plus another y should equal a straight angle, 180 degrees. The other equation comes from here this angle here is corresponding angle with this one so that's 3y plus 15 degrees right so that gives us a second equation 3y plus 15 degrees plus this angle here 3x minus 15 degrees also gives us 180 so if you combine these two equations you will get First, 4y plus x equals 165 degrees, then x plus y equals 6 degrees. So if you use the first equation minus second equation, you will get 3y equals 105 degrees. This will give us y equals 35 degrees, right? Then put it here, then y x equals 25 degrees. So that's the solution, right? Any questions? All right, so if no questions, let's have a look at the next concept. So the next problem is given a some conditions, how can we test if two lines or several lines are parallel? So we can use the following test theorems. Again, 
because they are theorems, we need to provide a strict proof to each one of them. So let's have a look at the theorems first, then try to prove each one of them. Okay? Testing theorem state or a testing theorem one states that if two lines are cut by transversal, if corresponding angles are congruent, congruent means equal, okay? Then the two lines are parallel. For example, on the right side, if angle A equals angle B, then we will know M is parallel to N, okay? And testing theorem 2 states that two lines are cut by transversal. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. For example, on the right side, if angle A equals angle B, we say we know M is parallel to N. So basically, it's a reverse process of the pr property of the parallel lines, right? Testing theorem 3 states that if two lines are cut by transversal and if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. For example, in this diagram here, if we know angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees, then M is parallel to N. Okay, the problem is, the problem is how do you prove each one of them? Okay, uh, sorry, I forgot the last one. Last one is if every point on line M is located at exactly the same distance from line N, then M is parallel to N. For example, in this diagram, A is any point on M and AB is parallel, A is perpendicular to N. If AB is a constant, then M is parallel to N. Okay, the problem now is how do you prove each one of them? For example, we can start by proving theorem 1. So the question is, if you are given M, N, and L, a setup like this, and also given angle A equals angle B, in this case, can you prove line M is parallel to line M? Any sauce in here? Okay, again, you can use contradictory method to try to prove it. So suppose M is not parallel to N. So let's have a look at uh, the proof. Assume M is not parallel to N. And then if these two lines are not parallel, then M and N must intersect, right? So let's say M and N intersect at some point O. So suppose this is M, this is N. This is line N, this is M, right? And this is our line L. So from point A, we can make a line. F C that is parallel to N. This is a point A. This is a point B. So from point N, 
if m is not parallel to n, then we can make a line that is parallel to n, right? For example, this line could look like this. So let's call it fc. Can you follow me? Then we know this line and the line M must be different lines, right? Otherwise, FC must also intersect with N, right? So they must be different lines. Because line FC is parallel to N, we have angle D, well, let's call this point here D, DAF equals angle B. Angle B is here. So this angle equals this angle, right? And because A equals B, we know angle GAF must equal zero degrees, right? Can you see that? Because here, this is uh, according to the given information, this is angle A, right? Angle A is equal to B. This is a given information. Angle A here equals B, and we also know this angle also equals B, so that leaves us this angle here must be zero degrees, right? If this this angle is zero degrees, that means this line is actually on top of this line, right? So contradicts. Contradicts the assumption here. Therefore, you have found a contradiction. Then the assumption must not hold. So assumption M is parallel to N. It's not parallel to N is not correct. So if the assumption is not correct, M must be parallel to N. This is the only possibility, right? So therefore, we have proved when corresponding angles are equal, then the two lines are parallel. Did you get it? OK, then using the conclusion, we can also prove the second, third, and remaining theorems. The second one becomes much easier, right? So here we have, given A equals B, can you prove M is parallel to N? Of course, we can because a equals B and A also equals C, right? Therefore, we have B equals C. We have just proved that corresponding angles are equal, then the two lines are parallel. So the second one becomes much easier, right? And same thing to the third one. If A plus B is 180 degrees, then we must have M is parallel to N because A plus B equals 180 degrees and A plus C also equals 180 degrees. C is here. Therefore, we know B equals C. Again, when B equals C, corresponding angles are equal, then we must have M is parallel to N, right? Okay, again, I'll leave the for theorem for you to prove of this class. Okay, it's a, it's a little complex, it's not much easier, as easier as the remaining three. So here is a summary of the commonly used property theorem and testing theorem. And the last column is a combined statement of these theorems. So each of the theorems here is actually reversible. For example, Two lines are parallel can give you corresponding angles are congruent. And then the reverse statement is also true. Two lines are parallel, oh sorry, corresponding angles are congruent can also give you two lines are parallel. Okay? Which means two lines are parallel is equivalent to say,
corresponding angles are con congruent. Either way is correct. Did you get it? Therefore, in this table, actually, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight theorems, right? Four property theorems and four testing theorems. Be careful with their difference. Can you follow me? Okay, so next, let's talk about angles in triangles. When we connect three points with line segment, we form a triangle. The points are vertices of a triangle, and the segments are the size of a triangle. The angles inside the triangle formed by the size are called interior angles of a triangle. When we refer to angles of a triangle, so when you see angles of a triangle, usually we mean the interior angles, not the exterior angles. Okay, be careful with that. Other than that, the concept of a triangle is pretty straightforward. So we'll just pass, okay? And next, when we extend a side past the vertical of a triangle, then we can form a exterior angle of that triangle. So for example, this angle here is called exterior angle such as angle here, x, z, p. We call x and y are the remote interior angles of exterior angle of x, z, p. So these two interior angles are the remote angles of this exterior angle, x, z, p. Are you clear? Again, this is some trivial concept. Make sure we are talking about the same language in geometry, okay? And there are also some theorems with respect to the triangles. First theorem is the sum of the angles in the triangle is always 180 degrees. Probably have already heard of this, right? For example, if you have a triangle ABC, the angle A plus angle B plus angle C is always 180 degrees. Again, because this theorem, can you try to prove it by yourself? How do you prove it? Consider this question here. Given the triangle ABC, can you prove angle A plus angle B plus angle C is always 180 degrees? Okay, any, any thought here? We can draw a... Can you give a hint? Yes, uh, we have hint. just learned parallel lines, right? Well, so far we have learned five axioms plus how many theorems? Nine theorems, right? These are your starting point. You can use what we have learned so far to help you prove this. For example, you can draw a line here, right? So if you draw a line, let's say it's line K, through point A, such that K is parallel to line or line segment BC, then we have alpha, let's say alpha is here, beta is here, so alpha equals angle B, right? Angle B is here. And beta equals angle C, angle C is here. We know angle alpha plus angle BAC plus angle beta is 180 degrees because it's a straight angle, right? 
therefore angle B plus angle BAC plus angle C is 180 degrees. And these are the interior angles of that triangle, right? So we can prove this statement is always true, right? Okay, next. Again, so far we have learned five axioms and probably 11, 10 or 11 theorems, right? So use what we have learned so far. Can you prove the second theorem here? Any exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of its remote interior angles. For example, if you have a setup like this, can you prove angle XZP equals angle X plus angle Y? Okay, good. How about Neil? Yeah, so here, I'm, I'm going to give you my proof. You can compare yours with mine, okay? So I'll write it here. Proof, so angle X plus, we know angle X plus angle Y plus alpha, alpha is here, equals 180 degrees. And also we know alpha plus angle X, Z, P is also 180 degrees. So let's call this equation number one and two. We can use equation number one minus equation number two. This will give us angle X plus angle Y minus angle X, Z, P is zero, right? Therefore, we know angle X plus angle Y equals angle X, Z, P. X, Z, P is the exterior angle. X and Y are the remote angle of the of that exterior angle, right? Therefore, this is our second theorem with respect to a triangle. Okay, so next let's have a look at some exercises of what we have learned so far. One angle in triangle is twice another angle, and the third angle is 54 degrees. Can you find the measure of the smallest angle in the triangle? That's quick. Have you finished, Neil? Neil? Have you finished? Okay, we can let one angle of the triangle be x, right? Then we have another angle is just uh, twice of it. Therefore, we have a equation with respect in terms of x, right? And we have x plus 2x then plus 54 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, one unknown variable with one equation, we should be able to find x. Therefore, 3x equals 126 degrees. Therefore, x equals 42 degrees. And then we know 2x equals 84 degrees. If you compare these two, uh, these three angles, then we know the smallest one is, smallest angle is 42 degrees, right? Any questions?
All right, then let's consider another quiz. In this diagram, M is parallel to N, and section AB is perpendicular to M, and angle ADC equals angle BC equals 3x. Angle CEB is known, angle BCD is x. Can you find the value of x? Yes, that's quick. Very good. X is 40 degrees. That's correct. And the method should, uh, it could be more than one method to solve it. Okay. Neil, have you finished that? Okay, because we're running out of time, so I'll just give you the solution. Okay. And compare it with mine. So we can call this angle here with, uh, as alpha to facilitate our discussion. And this angle here is beta, this angle here is gamma. And because m is parallel to n, we have also m is parallel to section AB. <coughs> then we know alpha plus beta it must equal 90 degrees, right? Then beta equals 90 degrees minus alpha. And there, because alpha plus 3x plus 50 degrees equals 180 degrees. Therefore, we know alpha equals 130 degrees minus 3x, right? So let's call this equation number one, and this is equation number two. We can put equation number two into equation number one. This will give us beta equals 90 degrees minus 130 degrees minus 3x, which equals 3x minus 40 degrees, right? Then gamma equals 180 degrees minus 3x. Because x plus gamma plus beta equals 180 degrees, therefore we have x plus 180 degrees minus 3x plus 3x minus 40 degrees should equal 180 degrees. And again, one unknown variable, one equation, we should be able to find x, right? Well, as I said, there could be more than one method to solve it. Probably your method is better than mine, okay? Uh, the final solution is x equals 40 degrees. Well, the key is to establish a equation in terms of x. All right. Okay, so that's the end of today's lesson.